more tea is being spilled about Matt Lauer and Katie Kirk's new tell all memoir yesterday. Now we did tell you that Katie sent Matt sympathetic texts after he was fired. We also told you about an incident when Matt's wife called the control room. That's where the producers sit asking for the phone number of a woman she thought was sleeping with that she thought he was sleeping with. Well, today Katie admits that she heard whispers quote unquote of the rumors about Matt. She says that one producer was told by Matt to come to his office wearing a quote skirt that came off easily. Well, Katie also says that she thought it was gross, quote unquote, that Matt was cheating on his wife, but said that the general rule at that time was that it's none of your business. Erica, did she have a responsibility to come forward, even though she did say she believed everything was consensual? Is there not still a power dynamic? I believe that, and I understand that where this is, we're taking 2021 lenses and applying them to what was happening then. However, if someone came to her that was in need of help and felt like she was someone who could pass this on without them losing their job or having backlash, absolutely it was her responsibility to present this to HR. Now we know that HR wasn't necessarily doing the right. HR job, but at least at that point, and I want people to be mindful of this in today's culture, if someone comes to you and expresses something that is toxic or discriminatory, it is your responsibility not to investigate it, but to give it to the proper authorities to have that investigation. My thing is, what if you don't have that, like a text message or an email? You don't have any concrete evidence, but you hear rumors around the around the office. We all dealt with that before in our own workplaces, and you just don't know if it's true, and you don't want to put your nose in where it doesn't belong. That's kind of my philosophy, so I, I don't want to get involved in other people's business. I hear things, I don't know what's true and what's not, but at what point am I responsible? Well, I always think Katie Kirk is probably the closest person to Matt Lauer on the face of the planet during that time and would know more than almost anyone. In 2012, she went and watched What Happens Live at Andy, Andy Cohen and said, what's the worst habit Matt has? And she said, oh, he constantly pinches my butt over and over and over again. And at that moment, the climate, everyone laughed and Andy Cohen said, I wouldn't be bothered by that. Today, you don't say that, but if that was happening back then, you gotta know some other things were probably happening in your circle around it. I agree, I, I just don't know why she's coming out with it now and I wish she had come out with it earlier, but everyone tells their story in their time. It just rubs me the wrong way. Well, I'll tell you another part that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, including myself. Uh, the other subject creating a firestorm around this book, Katie's treatment of women in her own words. So in it, she admits that she didn't help female co-hosts because she wanted to, quote, protect my turf. She also gets into great detail about the rivalry between herself and Diane Sawyer, talking about the, quote unquote, booking wars between GMA and today. Katie says she scrutinized Diane's interviews and couldn't get over how cool she was. She also said, Tori, that, um, that she, in so many words, got off on beating Diane right um what do you make of let's their their rivalries so I'm going to kind of like put that aside right. given the fact that they're on two different TV shows what rubbed me the wrong way was women within your TV show your colleagues you did not try to help I have an issue with that and I think you're right to do so but and I would just ask you back back then you didn't get three spots for women. You had one spot and she had to protect that spot at all costs. D is it right? No. Did I learn that from you and you and Lindsay to fix each other's crowns? There's enough there for all of us. Yes. Did I certainly do that back in the day? A bit. At an audition where girls look like me, I would do a stare down. That is not helpful. It is not nice. It is not right. But there was one spot for me and I was going to get it. So I get the climate back then was there wasn't all these open representations, but you both literally taught me there's enough for everybody at the table, really. Well, I think that that's also a very important conversation to have. Yes, the climate is very different um, today than it was then. I feel that way, um, you know, especially being a woman of color, it is very imperative to promote the message that there is enough out there for everyone. When you talked about staring other women down, the question is, were they staring you no. down? No. When Katie talked about her checking for Diane, was Diane checking for Katie? Because ultimately, you don't have enough bandwidth to do both. Yeah. It's either make yourself great and not worry about what's happening with everyone else, knowing that your spot is going to be secured at some point, even if it's not right now. I needed an Erica Cobb back then. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have her now. Yes.